Good morning, MDUMC family. I'm Pastor Michael Jarbo, and on behalf of all of the staff and clergy here at MDUMC, we want to be some of the first to say Merry Christmas. We hope you are having a wonderful start to your morning, got a cup of coffee, and you'll enjoy a worship service in your home this morning, wherever you are. So on behalf of our family to you, Merry Christmas. Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made, without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The world became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. Merry Christmas. On behalf of the clergy and staff of Memorial Drive United Methodist Church, we are so glad that you've joined us for worship today and allowed us into your life on this most holy of days as we celebrate the birth of Jesus the Christ. I hope you still have that candlelight going on in your heart 
from last night. What an amazing evening we had with the candlelight. And I got thinking today about the imagery from our scripture of light and darkness and the beauty of those candles last night, shining the light of Jesus Christ to the world. And I got thinking this morning about some of the experiences we've shared during this Advent season, and I wanted to share them with you as my Christmas message today. Again, Merry Christmas. I'm so glad you're joining us today for worship, and we hope that all the service so far has been a blessing to you. I was thinking a lot this week about our our exciting time out at Gallery Furniture, taking our live nativity on the road. What a special event for the youth of our church to get to do that and to get to share that live nativity with a broader part of the Houston population. What a great joy it was for each one of them. And what I love about a nativity Maybe you have one where you are right now, maybe under the Christmas tree or there in a living room or out by the kitchen. You've you've got one somewhere near, and I want to encourage you to look at it closely. But in every nativity scene, Jesus is at the center. Last night when we lit those candles and shared Holy Communion, Jesus was at the center. It, It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, But every time we get together around a nativity, Jesus is there, the baby in the center. Uh, In fact, when we talk about a nativity, I I want you to know it's kind of fascinating to me. That scene with the star there with the baby in the middle, Mary and Joseph on either side, all the shepherds gathered, all the wise men, all there in that one scene. Did you know that never actually happens in Scripture? They're all in different accounts of the narrative of the birth of Jesus. But somehow, as we retell the story all together, all these different people from all walks of life are able to come together when Jesus is at the center. This Christmas, I hope, that for you, you find yourself wherever you might be this day, realizing that you are not alone, that when you put Jesus in the center, all these different people are drawn together. I know some of you, you feel like magi, you feel like the wise people, others of you, you feel like the shepherds, as if you've put in a hard day's work and now are there in the presence of the Messiah. Some of you parents, I know you can relate to to Mary and Joseph raising these children. And I know some of us, yeah, we feel like the animals, don't we? But here, as we have Jesus in the center of our world and our life, we're told in the Gospel of John that from these various stories of the birth of Jesus, it's as if a light has shone in the world, as if a new creation has begun, that from the very beginning of all things that existed, the love of God was being made known, telling of a day that would yet happen when Jesus would become God's mind made flesh. We're literally told in the text, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him, and listen to these words here in verse 4, he was life, and the life was the light of all people. I mean, think about it. There's something so special about Jesus that his life becomes light and his light shines to all people. Did you see that light shine? Did you see it when we were at Gallery Furniture? Did you see it when we were serving people half a world away with mission teams engaged with our mission partners over in Kenya this year? Did you see it right here in our own neighborhoods as we supported Memorial Assistance Ministries with 500 school uniforms? Where did you see the life 
that gives light to the world? Have you experienced Jesus in your faith journey this year? I think all of us are called to somehow in this baby meet that unexpected Savior, that one who is in the center, that somehow, as different as we all are, as as many directions as God seems to pull us in all our busyness, can we on this day take a moment and pause and focus on who's in the center? Is the baby Jesus in the center of your life? Is the baby Jesus there in the center of who you are and how you live? When the baby Jesus is there in the center, that unexpected Messiah meets us and forever changes our life. Have you ever held a baby? Have you ever picked up that child and looked into those newborn eyes? It's not what you would expect. Not only is the baby so incredibly vulnerable, but you become vulnerable as you look and experience that baby. Somehow all the worries of the world melt away, and that child in the center that you're holding becomes all that matters. Have you ever looked into those eyes of love? When you look into the eyes of love, I believe you see the life that gives light to the world. I was thinking of a story that I had heard many, many years ago, and it's one that has been often told. I went searching for an author of it, and I found several different sources for it, and the story told many different ways. So I, I don't have somebody to attribute it to, but I think it speaks to this light shining in the world. It's the story of a Danish orphan who was just so blessed to find an orphanage home just before Christmas. He had lived on the streets on his own, and now this home had taken him in. But as Christmas approached and was just right around the corner, he heard the other children talking about something he didn't understand. He heard these children explaining how on Christmas Day, A family came every year and would serve them a sit-down meal and decorate a Christmas tree. How full the kids would get. And his mind just kind of imagined he had not been able to remember the last time that he had ever felt full. He, He couldn't remember ever seeing or having held or touched a Christmas tree. He had only seen Christmas trees through foggy windows of other people's homes. And now he was going to experience those for real when one of the other children interrupted his dreaming and let him know that the best thing of all was that the family would bring an orange. And he was thrilled about the idea of getting to eat an orange. He had once touched orange peels and gotten it on his fingers and smelt the orange all day long. He could only dream of and imagine how sweet it must be and how wonderful it would. Well, that day sure came and there was Christmas Day and all the children gathered and oh, He ate so much that he was full. He saw a Christmas tree and the way that the candles lit it up and how beautiful it was. And sure enough, the headmaster there with the family had a whole crate of oranges and began to hand them out student by student. But his name was never called, only to realize that they had ordered the oranges before he had arrived in the orphanage. It was too much, and he left and went up to his new bunk, and he threw himself down and just began to cry. As he was crying, he felt a tap on his shoulder. And he kept crying. He didn't want to deal with anything, and he felt another tap, and then another tap, and another tap. But he kept crying until he cried himself asleep. But to his surprise, that next morning when he awoke, There were slices from all the other orphans' oranges given to him 
so that he could share in their meager feast. Friends, what do you have that you can share this Christmas day? Because when you share it with others, in the name of Jesus the Christ, you share nothing else than the life of Jesus that is the light of the world, and that light still shines. Oh, there is darkness, and there is difficulty, and there is challenge, but the light of Jesus entered the darkness, and the darkness could not overcome it. Merry Christmas, friends. May this day bring blessings to you and those you love. Amen. unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Merry